right, you guys, so we've talked a lot about major scales since the beginning. That's sort of been an underlying thread that we keep coming back to. You want to know how to find your major scales. Hopefully by now that feels pretty second nature. We spent a lot of time in the basic section also talking about one, four, five chord progressions and what that means when we say one, four, five. And if uh, that's something you need to go back and revisit, go for it, check it out. There's quite a bit of information there about how to uh, make sense of all that. But Let's take a deeper look at these scales and see if we can build a 1-4-5 chord progression off of, off of a major scale. Then surely there's more chords to be found. What about a 2 chord and a 3 chord? What does that mean? What is a 6 chord? Maybe uh, you've been to a jam and you hear somebody say a 6 minor. What does that mean and how do you find that? Um, so if you can play a basic major scale, then you're well on your way to being able to understand all this stuff. Um, so we're gonna look at like some simple, um, simple ways to kind of dissect this stuff. So if you can go back to your good old buddy, the G major scale. A quick review here. All right, how did we find the four chord? Of course, we probably know that's G, C, and D. I encouraged you all to remember those chord families. So G, C, and D always go together. So you already know what one, four, and five is in a lot of different chords, uh, keys by now. But if we wanted to find a two chord, all we'd have to do is go, okay, if, if in the key of G, G is our one chord, then if we play A, which is the second note of a G major scale, then that must mean that A names our two chord. Well, in this case, when you're moving up a, a scale, um, chord scale progression, the two chord is gonna be a minor chord. Now, why is that? Well, let's look at what's happening when we move everything up a degree. So, for example, if we're, we play a two finger G chord, we know what that is. If you think about the way that a G major scale moves, of course we have the octave above, which our fingers are already in place here by playing the third fret of the E string and the second fret of the A string. If we were to take just these two fingers and stay within the same notes of a G major scale, but we're just moving up to the next interval. And what do I mean when I say next interval? Just meaning that if you kept playing, okay, so, so if you were playing, okay, after the B note in a G major scale, we get C. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna move this B note up to C, we're going to move this G note up to A, because if we kept continuing up the scale within G major, those are the notes we'd go to, so we're moving everything up one. Okay, so that means our open G naturally becomes A, and our open D naturally becomes E. Now this may be a lot to wrap your head around at first if you've never thought of it this way, but basically if you can just kind of remember the notes within a G major scale. Okay, we know if we're playing a G, we don't have a G sharp um, or an A flat in a G major scale. We know that we have an A natural, so therefore you can just think about moving that up or just simply commit to memory that the two chord is a minor chord. Okay, so we've learned how to make minor chords by now. I'll go back and check out the uh, movable chords video and, and you can learn how to make uh, bar chords of both major and minor and all the different keys. So in other words, if we start on our two finger G chord and we go to find what A minor is and we moved all those notes up within the G major scale to the next interval, we'd get an A minor, okay? So it's helpful to just commit that to memory. Okay, if I'm in the key of G, the two minor is A. Okay? And if somebody says the two chord, um, if, you were, if you were playing, um, playing in a jam and you're in the key of G and somebody says, go to the two chord, okay? That could mean A major, 
okay? If they don't say two minor, it doesn't always mean that it's A minor, but we're looking at a chord scale. So we're wanting everything to be connected. So that's why it's minor, because if you move everything up one interval, then it's naturally minor, not major. Everything's moving up in perfect harmony, okay? So we got G, we have A minor. Now, if we did the same thing, we take each note and go, okay, what's the next note in a G major scale from there? Okay, for three, we have B, right? One, two, three. So how do we know if it's major or minor or how it lays out on the fretboard? Everything is gonna move up to the next interval. In this case, that makes it B minor. Okay, so again, all these guys are just moving up to the next note within the scale. The E becomes F sharp because we don't have an F natural in a G major scale. And again, if you're questioning how to get to this stuff or what it means, you can always just check back in with your basic major scale and go, okay, are the notes I'm playing? Does that make sense? Is everything moving up in harmony within the scale? Yes. Okay, so A minor to B minor. So hopefully that concept is making sense by now. I'm just gonna keep working our way up, but that's how you can think of this stuff. That's how you know whether to make it minor or major. We'll have a diminished chord here in a minute. So we have G, A minor, then we have B minor. Then we have our four chord. Okay, we already know our four chord most likely because by now you've probably memorized these one, four, five chord progressions, G, C, and D. Okay, so if we know C is the four chord, we're golden there. We actually know that D is the five chord. Hopefully the, you've got these bar chords under your fingers by now. Okay, so we can keep moving up. So we have one, two minor, three minor, our four chord, our five chord. And then if we keep on going, we've got an E minor. So again, from there, if we moved all these notes up to their next spot within a G major scale, that's all we're doing, moving each, each note up one interval. Okay, E minor. And again, um, you'll notice that as I'm moving up, these shapes on the mandolin stay the same in many cases, which is great, right? We've got the open, open G chord. And we have an A minor, all we gotta do to get to B minor is simply just shift our fingers up a whole step. Okay, and to move from major to minor, when we go up, so this would be a C minor, but we need C major, so all we have to do, you've probably already got this one memorized for sure, but it's the difference in that third, making it major or minor. So G, A minor, B minor. We're in C to get D, we're just up a whole step. Now we're gonna go up another whole step, but it's gotta be minor, E minor. Then next up, if we kept everything moving in the same, uh, the same direction, we're gonna wind up with what is called an F sharp diminished. Now we don't use diminished chords a whole lot in bluegrass, so I haven't focused on them very much. Uh, keep in mind, if you want to dig deeper into sort of the theory inside of that, you can, all, of things like this, you can take the uh, free theory course here at ArtistWorks. But keep in mind, just use your ear and go, huh, F sharp diminished. It also sounds a lot like, like a D7 chord. So if you think about your two finger D chord,